I'm CK. Today we're going to try something that I've needed for a while. It's a digital photo tachometer. So it's a non-contact uh, tach. I had one, I lost it years and years ago, so I picked this one up from eBay for $10. So we'll see how good it is and see what's in the box. Hope you enjoy the video. Here's the box. Model number, digital photo tachometer, digital meter. Nothing else on the outside. Let's open her up. Little pouch. Get the box ready for recycling. Some loose thread. A little carry strap and a zipper. Gosh, this is really light. I must have to put some batteries in it. Okay, so here it is, and yeah, it's got a laser warning there, and it takes AA batteries, which is good. Test and memory. Now here's one thing I noticed in the description. These are obviously reflective pieces of tape, and whatever you're going to measure the rotational speed of, you have to put uh, a piece of this tape on it so the laser has something to uh, sense against. I may try some other materials, even though this is easy to find, but you also are going to leave something on there. Uh, digital tack operation manual. Uh, features test range 2.5 to 99.999 uh, I think that's uh, for those of us in the US that would be a comma there so that's 99,000 RPM I think is what its maximum is resolution is tenth of an RPM up to 1000 RPM and then 1 RPM over 1000 RPM RPM and accuracy is 0.05% of a digit. Huh, interesting. Samples every eighth of a second over 60 RPM. Test range is automatic. Memory has a bunch of things. Detecting distance uh, 50 to 200 meter, millimeters for LED, 50 to 500 millimeters for laser. And again, I believe this is laser. Uh, time base is a quartz timer crystal, <coughs> battery 9 volt, well that's not true, uh, power consumption, oh I guess it's got both LED and laser, I'm not real sure. Okay, so there's the reflective mark we put on something, signal light beam, memory button, measure button, where's the measure button, 3.4. Oh, where it says test, okay. And the battery compartment, of course, on the back. Apply a reflecting mark to the object being measured. Depress the measure button. Measure button, you're a bad person. Now it's depressed. Uh, and there's a visible light beam, which shows you where the laser or LED is pointed. Uh, 12 millimeter squares, half inch squares. Okay. Non-reflective area must always be greater than the reflective area. That makes sense. If the shaft is normally reflective, you have to cover it with black tape. Shaft surface must be clean. Uh, high resolution and flamp, uh, fast sampling time, if the measure is a very low RPM value, suggest attach more marks than divide by the number of marks. Okay. And memory uh, tells you what the memory is. Install the battery 6F22 9 volt correctly in the case. Don't think that's true. Okay, I'm going to go get some batteries and put it in and we'll give it a whirl. I was wrong about the batteries. It does in fact take a 9 volt. So let me see, let me do a basic thing. I'm going to take 
the reflective strip, hit the test button, and you can see the digit comes on. Now I'm going to move the reflective strip in there. That's 90 RPM. I'll slow down. 53, 61. Now go fast. Yep. Seems to be working basically. Now I'm going to try something else right here. I'm going to try it with non reflective and see if I get anything. Nope. Oh no, there it goes. So you don't necessarily have to use that piece of tape, but we probably will. Now I'm going to start with something that I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, this is a little motor with a wheel on it that came from some other project. I'm going to put a little piece of tape on there and see if uh, this is too small to be able to read. I've got a little bitty piece of tape and of course the hardest problem is peeling the backing off the tape as always. What? Come on! There we go. I'm going to put it on right here, right by the rim. Again, this piece of tape may be too small for this to read, but we'll give it a try. I've got a little uh, power supply up here that I'm driving this from. Uh, let me show you. Uh, that's from a kit. I've built a number of those. Uh, it's really a very nice device. They're handy to have. They're 20 bucks. You can have them all over your uh, workshop instead of breaking out your big power supply. So let me put both leads on here. We're at 1.2 volts. This is not done yet. I'm, I'm supposed to have this all powered differently. Okay, it's rotating. Now, let me see if I can get this all in the frame well. And now I'll press measure. Oh, there it goes. 336 RPM. Let me turn up the voltage. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. Okay, now I'll turn up the voltage, see if it goes in there. That's, uh, geez, that's 14,000 RPM at 4 volts. And now it's varying. Huh. Okay, I'm not staying dead on. You really have to stay dead on if you move up a little bit. Oh no, it's staying pretty much dead on. I'm going to turn, lower the voltage again. 7,000 RPM. We'll go back down to 1.2 volts, down to 3,000 RPM. So that seems to work pretty well. Okay, I'm going to reconfigure some stuff and we'll try another one. Now I'm going to try something a little more challenging. This is my portable table saw and I'm going to put the little marker on the tip of one tooth. Hopefully it'll stay on there. And I will be using my cut defense gloves just to make sure, give myself a little extra. Now also, as you notice, we're outside in the sun, so we'll see if that affects anything. I'll turn it on. It's going to get loud. I'll plug the battery in first. Come on, battery. I'm not getting anything there. I think it's probably because it's one of two things. Either the 
tape came off as that was rotating, which is certainly possible, so let me pull the battery out of the saw. Battery's out. No. Nope. The tape's still there. I think this is the problem. This blade is too reflective to be able to sense it, so they cautioned about that. Now this is not a case where I'm going to uh, put black tape on it to make it uh, non-reflective everywhere else. So if the surface is reflective, the tape's not going to help. So now we know that. So I'll go over to something that may be more interesting. Now I'm going to try it on the car. Now one thing that is true is it's much more difficult to do this than it used to be because fans are all shrouded so I can't just put a marker on the fan. So what I'm going to do is put it on a pulley and I'm cleaning all the grease off the pulley so the tape should stick. Okay, we've got a good chance on that. You can see there I've got a piece of that reflective tape in there. Can you see that? Yeah, just barely. Okay, I'm going to power the engine on. Now the RPM indicator on the dash is showing something like uh, 700, 800 RPM. So we'll see what we get here. Uh, it's showing me 200 RPM, but I think the tape might have come off. Actually, it's saying 2,278 RPM, which is not right. So I'm going to correct myself on the last uh, engine test. That pulley is rotating faster than the crankshaft. Uh, you can see it inside. Uh, so that 2,268 RPM is probably accurate, and it was consistent. So that worked. And I think I've got one more test I want to try. So let me set that up. This is my drill press. And I've got the belts set for 900 RPM, which is what I usually use it at. And I'm trying to get the backing off the tape again. Come on. And we'll put it on the spindle here. And we'll turn, let me get a little closer, let me turn the drill press on. Now we'll test. Okay, that looks good. As you can see, it's reading about 900. Let's look at the memory. 941 up. 935 down, that's the low. And the average was 938. That's reasonable. I don't think this drill press is calibrated to the ones of an RPM. So that looks good. So this seems like a good unit. Uh, I can't tell precisely because I don't have a precise RPM uh, device to check, but the drill press was a pretty good example of it being near enough. So what, what did we learn? We learned that you're going to use a lot of that reflective tape. So you may want to buy a bigger roll instead of the few loops that they included. Secondly, a reflective surface like that circular saw blade absolutely you can't get a good reading on. But other than that, reads RPM well. It's got the low, high, and average RPM. 
And for 10 bucks, I think it's a really good product. Hope you enjoyed the video.